Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Sunday Night Breakdown. Daniel Routledge and Dave Forrester with you to go through all the action uh, this week, Dave. And Dave, what a week in Europe it's been. Victories mm. for Newcastle, big win for Caledonia, London winning in, in Spain. It's all going on. Yeah, aye. Um, probably London's win was the most um, substantial, um, albeit... Um, Badalona probably aren't quite where they have been the past few years. They're still an ACB team. Yeah, still the table. The ACB. Yeah. And they were missing um, a lot of their big guys, I think, and, and Gable has said he absolutely destroyed them inside. Um, but, you know, to 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 make that s- s- stop and to, and to beat a team with that kind of history is, is pretty substantial. It's, it allows you to go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I found yeah, a rabbit. I found a rabbit and probably yeah, yeah. put the hairs and yeah, maybe a disused cool uh, name. So, or something so like we'll that. just so we'll just uh, elaborate on that. So I, I couldn't find a, a British team winning in Spain result when I had a first look on uh, what night was it? Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, the great Roger Yap, who's uh, for those who don't know, just a legendary statistician. A lot of the history would have been in a skip in Leeds, were it not for. Uh, uh, Roger's intervention and he did the stats for the league for many years um, and, and kept the history of the game uh, uh, alongside John Atkinson. Um, he said, I'm sure I was at a game where Ovaltine lost the first leg at home and then won the second leg away by not by en- enough in Madrid. And, and just be uh, clear about this. Ovaltine yeah. was a, a, a brand of tea. No, it's uh, it's like a malt drink, isn't it? It's like malt a malt drink of some malt, sort, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. It's still, it's I think also, you can still it buy also, Ovaltine, can't you? Right, it was also a basketball team. Yeah, it was Hemel Hempstead, yeah. basically. Yeah. It was oh, Hemel yeah. Hempstead. But in those days, you had Ovaltine, you had Planters, you had all the teams had the names of their sponsors and nothing else, basically. It's like Indian cricket, yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, and 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 despite the fact that the Phoebe Europe website seems to be missing a few years of the Corach Cup, I was able to find the result and confirm it, um, that they did indeed win by six away in Madrid against, I think it was in Mabanco, um, but they'd lost by nine at home in the first leg, so they, so they went out. Um, so that was the last time. But that is still technically the same franchise as London. So if you follow the, the chains yeah, yeah. through via Milton Keynes and Watford and wherever else, it's still so they were still the first team to to do it. The last I time a team... do, I think I think you should do a limited edition plot map um, of all of the history of all the British basketball clubs and the clubs that they've been through in kind of family yeah. tree format. Yeah, yeah. Well, little, PJs, little pictures adorning yeah, them yeah. of important people that type yeah, of stuff. Yeah. I think you may get, you know, you might be able to sell like maybe even two or three. Yeah, the late great Pete Jakes did that. Yeah. He spent a lot of years uh, researching and mapping it all across. So uh, anything I do related to that was given to me by Pete Jakes. Uh, and Pete was I'm Pete did up. a website for those who don't know called Paw Print, Print um, who which I'm not sure if it's still online or not. Is it? I think if you go into the Wayback Machine, you can find it, but it's not yeah. still online now. Yeah. 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 Which had everything on. Yeah, yeah, and he did all of that, and he grateful uh, was grateful to receive about twenty years ago from Pete uh, copies of his history, so that's how I can track it track it all back. But the the other thing I was about to say is last time a British team beat a Spanish team was two thousand and two in the FIBA. What was it called? The FIBA Champions Conference or something like that. It, it was essentially the the Europe Cup before the Europe Cup. Birmingham beat Tenerife 70, I think it was 76, 75, something like that. Oh, and I man. assume Rob Patton Ostro would have been playing in that team because that was about his era. I'm yeah. Sure he played in that European team. So, the, so uh, a landmark win for Lions, where, whichever way you measure it, definitely. And and a good win for, um, for uh, Caledonia, albeit against uh, limited resistance, and, and mm-hmm. a pretty good win for Newcastle away from home in Latvia. Yeah, I mean, neither of those two teams were very good that they were playing against, neither Caledonia or Newcastle. Um, Newcastle's win probably slightly better because they were away. Winning away is always a little bit harder than winning at home in Europe. Um, but, you know, it's it's, it's it's laying bare a few fallacies in relation to Europe as a homogeneous yeah. <laughs> entity, you know. There are good teams, there are bad teams, there are strong leagues, there are not-so-strong leagues. Um 
I and must confess, Valmira Glass is not one that's come across my radar until Tuesday. Night. Well, it appears that they're a team which is funded by um, the Bertans from the NBA. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and, I, and looking at the, the makeup of their roster, is basically two Americans, a couple of Latvian vets, and then a lot of young kids. Youngish kids, sorry. So it appears that they're using that as a vehicle to develop that being basketball, as opposed to you know any particular dominating the world, dominating the world, and so they're trying to develop young young players, and that's why they're in the European competition, despite the fact that they haven't actually won a game in it for two years. Um, in relation to the Romanian team, I just didn't think there was much resistance there. You know, I thought, I thought you know it was a um, Caledonia basically outlasted them but they outlasted them and scored 95 points you know that's not caledonia is not set up to score 95 points they're set up to beat you by 80 to 60 and um i just thought that they dominated them and as i say um not that much of a spectacle that game gives them an interesting kind of run in now because obviously they've got the the polish game which is the key game for them now yeah yeah um they've got to go to poland and and, and not lose by Three, I think, or something like that. Or is it? I didn't know. Four, three. three. I can't remember. Like that. Um, you know, and then they could potentially qualify. Um, but I think that will be a tough ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's come to uh, Thursday. Sheffield Sharks eighty-one, Surrey Scorchers seventy-eight. No, Justin Robinson. I believe he had a stomach bug. Gooden is still out injured. So Wang is at the point guard. Quinn is in the starting lineup. Hunt was, Hunt was you mean, back. You mean Cooper? Uh, sorry, Quinn Cooper. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I've written his first name down. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm a fanboy now. The way he shoots yeah. the ball, uh, he's just going to be Quinn. I'm just going to call him Quinn. Yeah. Uh, Hunt is back. Nixon was uh, in for Sheffield, but played uh, limited minutes. The start of the game, usual stuff. Um, Sheffield going inside to Cook. My mate Quinn uh, knocking down threes. Hunt scoring as well. It's tight opening, tight opening five minutes. Yeah, I was thinking of it. Isn't it? I mean, there's two things about it. One, this is where the whole fallacy of having more players makes you a better team kind of disappears. And it, it, it's so we we have it week in, week out, year in, year out, where it demonstrates that, that simply isn't the case. Um, sorry, you've had a log jam all season, and the wing spot, Steele, Cooper, Teo, um, Mohammed, um, somebody else as well. Um, I can't remember, but anyway, basically one spot for you know three, four players, and that just never works because players don't get into a rhythm and they don't get to find their niche within the team and they're constantly being kind of shuttled around. I'm sorry, Wang. Wang was the fifth guy. Um, now what happens is now they've got them missing both their point guards, so Robinson and um, Gooden are out, and that means that he doesn't want to start Lawrence because Lawrence probably. You wouldn't have thought his body can handle starting finishing a game, so he wants to bring him off the bench, um, which means that Wang becomes a de facto point guard. That in itself has pluses and minuses, but what it then does is it releases um, the other guys to play more minutes at the wing spot. So you've now got um, Taylor not playing either, which also releases it, which means that you've suddenly got Cooper and um, and Steele who've got a substantial amount of minutes ahead of them. And when you've got a substantial amount of minutes ahead of them, it allows you to get into a into a rhythm and do what you do. And as opposed to in some games this year, where these guys have been on for two minutes and haven't been back in for seven, eight, nine, ten minutes, and you're not going to play best play best that that way. Um, now the, the downside of the, the of Wang at the point guard is he, he get his decision making his decision making is shaky, and he does turn the ball over. But the upside of it is is that he has good size, good length. He gets the ball in his hands, so he himself also becomes involved. In the game, he's not waiting for the ball to be thrown to him. He's not a stand. He's not a standalone three point shooter. He's never going to be that. Um, you know, he's kind of a G League point guard type body type thing, in relation to his size, his athleticism, his ability to to get to the rim from the top of the key off one dribble on the high screen and roll and, and really, you know, dominate a game in that way. But as I say, his it's always been his decision making, and to a certain degree, his shooting, um, which has meant that. He's, he, he's never really been trusted to to do that, and on top of that, the fact that sorry of signed three point guards, mm, mm. you know, so he's not going to do that. So uh, it's how do you unlock the players that you have in the best way for the team? And sometimes injuries do that for you. Um, 
And as I said, they, they, they became a work in progress, but I thought they were a more coherent group over the two weeks, two games this weekend, simply because there was less of them. Yeah. And no less. Yeah, now, um, Sheffield have a new guy, and Nixon's come in for Allen. Um, he, the, the, it was trailed that Rodney Glasgow was going to play, which might, had a nice little joke lined up about that, but sadly, he, he didn't play. So I don't know Is it a it. joke you can save to next week, Dave? It's not there. No, not really. It was like you know, it's like it's like it's back to my own, back to my three guys in the league. You know, the three guys. Are, oh right, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah you know, it would have been um, you know, like a rainbow reunion, mm. Rod, Joe, and Darius. <laughs> anyway, go on. Um, Bungle, Bungle not included. Bungle uh, Parkinson included. and Lawrence three. Sorry, out to a twenty-seven nineteen lead. Uh, Cooper a couple of threes. Lee peaked at nine points, but. Sheffield slowly pegged them back in the second quarter and Ramsey and Pipkins threes late in the half tied it up. Yeah, Sheffield started a little bit. They did start a little bit slow. Um, but they they do play with this kind of energy about them. Um, Ramsey in particular. You know, watching Ramsey a bit this week specifically because, you know, he's kind of guy that goes under the radar a little bit because he doesn't do anything particularly Wow. You know, he, he makes 15-foot jump shots, he makes turnaround shots, he knocks down threes when he has to. He, he gets up in your face and he defends. And um, he can, he's kind of a little engine that runs that team. And, um, he, you know, we, the more you watch him, the more kind of I, I get impressed by him. Mm. He, he's just, he's just, he's, his fingers, his hands get where they, they, don't, they wouldn't otherwise get. He's just, he's, I think he's the guy who, if he doesn't play that well, I think they're going to struggle. That's why probably why they need Glasgow back as a secondary as a secondary facilitator. Um, well, other than that, it was you know, Sheffield have players who know their roles. And they, and Surrey didn't quite have as many players who were able to kind of continue on through the game that, in that fashion. Yeah, Sheffield edging it in the third quarter. Start of the fourth quarter, Surrey had one of those droughts that we've seen them have too many times this season. Yeah. Just one Bailey score in about six minutes. It goes from 61-61 at the start of the fourth to 76-63, and you think that's it? Yeah, well, I mean, credit to, to Lloyd, because he, you know, he did start another, or he did play another young academy grad, um, uh, Dejani Parkinson, Parkinson, Parkinson yeah, yeah, yeah. who actually came and played fearlessly, and, and you know, wouldn't necessarily have known it was his first game. Um, and that was because of, obviously, the lack of depth they had without Lord, without Robinson, without Gooden, and without Teo. Um but then you've got, but it's difficult when you have, you know, two effective, you know, very young BBR rookies in in him and um, Bailey on the court at the same time, you know, to 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 try and find a way of generating some offense, and um, this particularly against Sheffield, who aren't going to give anything easy and don't give you much in transition. So yeah, so that trout kind of happened, and you couldn't really see. Um, sorry, getting back, but then they did have a little MFA comeback. Yeah, in. they did. Yeah, Lawrence scored at four fourteen, uh, which ended that spell. They then scored nine in a row to seventy six seventy two with a two minutes uh, to go. Uh, timeout for Sheffield. Cook was then blocked by Hunt. Steele, he almost lost the ball actually, and then somehow kept it. Hits a three on the buzzer of the shot clock seventy six seventy five one thirty. Yeah, and that was the twelve over. The, the, yeah, and, and that was the thing. Okay, have they got something going here? Because Josh Steele made that big play, and Jordan Hunt really actually helped them at the end because it was him or Jameson was in the game, and it was, um, and, and Jordan Hunt made that play. Um, but and I'm going back a while in my memory now. I think they had a couple of mental breakdowns. Yeah. So the first of all, there was nearly an eight second violation. I don't know if you noticed it from. Uh... Yeah. Ramsey just did a really good job because the ball had gone backwards and he straight away looked up and realised there's no time for a dribbler. I've got to pass it forward. I thought it might have been his second violation. You know? It was close, but... It's, I, got, it's, I, when, it's, it's when you catch the when ball. When you catch the ball, yeah. You know, it's not when the ball crosses the halfway line. And I thought when he caught the ball, it was 15. Um, but, you know, it's a difficult one that it's not, with, you know, it's not with, not as the ball crosses the yeah the of, the, of, the, of the halfway line. Yeah. But it's tough, you know, it's a tough call. Yeah. But credit to Ramsey, because a lot of people would have yeah. just tried to run it there. Uh, Cook misses from close range, but the ball manages to ricochet back 
to the Sharks. And this was the thing. There was a couple of offensive rebounds at the that end. That was it, yeah. They got yeah. They, 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 a couple of times they got their hands on the basketball yeah. and they, they couldn't pull it in. They couldn't make the winning play. Uh, Ramsey was fouled by Wang. He makes two free throws. That was a bad foul. 78, so it was a bad foul, yeah. It was a bad, it was a reach, reach round from behind, I think. And it was just, you know, you, you, know, you can't be given three points away in that situation. And then at the other end, a miscommunication between Hunt and Lawrence, and they ended up... Yeah, and you wonder what are they running that play for at that point, you know, because, you know, they haven't run much in the way... They haven't run... I don't think they've run a back door for Andrew Lawrence all season. Mm. I don't remember it if they I have. think he mentioned it in the timeout, though. That was the thing. I might go, and that's why I think Hunt then said... That's bad. You know, I mean, that's that's like, you know, you, you want the ball in the hands of your player. You want the most important thing is you get a really good shot, not that you get the not you get the play, which everybody thinks is, wow, well, what a fantastically drawn up play. We've got a layup out of nothing. Okay. Um, and on top of that, Hunt's been injured. He hasn't played for four or five weeks, so he's had no um, meaningful repetition of that with Lawrence. And under pressure, you don't, you go away from, you have to go to things that you've, you've done, mm-hmm. you know, that you've practised in. And so yeah, so it was not getting the. It, that's what it was. It was a three. It was a three plays. It was not getting a defensive rebound. The very bad foul by Wang, and then the 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 the, the fact that the, you've got a shot to, to tie the game, and you don't get the ball in your hands of a guard. Mm-hmm. You know, Lawrence had to have the ball in his hands um, at that point, and they're trying. They, they were all a bit elaborated. Forty-eight seconds to go. Uh, Lawrence fouls Rotinio. He's one for two from the line. Seventy-nine, seventy-four. Five and then 36 seconds to go. Steel catch and shoot three at the top, knocks it down. One point game now, 79 78. And then uh, <clears throat> Ramsey at the other end, sort of dancing behind the screens, misses a 16 footer, but another offensive rebound. Really Rutino gets it with 16 seconds uh, left. And, and, and that was almost that. Uh, sorry with the timeout before the free throws. Nichols makes two of them, 81 78. And then still had a tough three, basically, out of Koya. I know, I, I didn't get that. I, I didn't get the time out before the free throws. I get the fact that you might want to ice a shootout out of it. In my experience, that rarely works. Um, but you've got like, eight seconds? 13, eight seconds left. 13 seconds. 13, 13 seconds left to, to get a, you're down three. Mm. Uh, that, that means you've got two options in reality. Um, you go for a quick two and you extend the game. Or you try and set yourself up for a three point shot. Either way, you don't have the six seconds it takes a ball to get over half court mm-hmm. to waste. You know, you don't. And so, and they had a timeout to spare. So I, I, I kind of understand taking, you can take the timeout before the time, before the, the foul shots, but take the timeout afterwards as well. Advance the ball. Mm-hmm. I just can't, I can't think of any logic why you wouldn't advance the ball in that situation, other than maybe you've got a play whereby you need someone to get a, get downhill and get ahead of steam, you know, from have the whole court as a runway, that type of thing. But you get into your, you know, it's a difference between getting being pressured up the court and getting into your actions at probably seven or eight seconds on the shot clock, on, on the game clock, as opposed to getting into your actions as soon as you catch the ball on the court. Yeah. You know, on 13 seconds, which gives you the opportunity for maybe a fake handoff or a dribble and a layup and you, and you score quickly. I just, you know, maybe saving it for... Saving it in case they did score and you need, needed another one, but why call it before the timeout then? You know, I didn't, I just didn't see the logic in that. I'm sure that there is some, but I don't know what it was. So Ramsey, fourteen point seven assists, three steals, plus eighteen in thirty minutes of action. Mm. Uh, Pipkins, thirteen m- minus one in twenty six minutes of action. Bizarrely, uh, mm. Rotino, uh, twelve points and five rebounds. Lawrence, fourteen points and seven assists. Wang, twelve point seven assists. Si- sorry, twelve point seven rebounds, six assists, three steals. Brackets, six turnovers. Yeah, and that's that's a curious egg with him. Mm. Um, you know, you're going to get some good stuff, and you you but you you basically are putting your life in his hands as a as a coach when you give him the ball as much as that, which you know, which you know, might be what he needs, but he's going to have to get better at it to do it at a higher level. He has all the physical tools to do it. He's now you know he's he's going to have to have the. I don't imagine he's ever done much of it before, mm. so he's now going to have to have the, the the reps to see if he can make a difference. He did the same at Newcastle last year. There was a game at Newcastle, didn't win yeah, yeah. last year. at Newcastle took over the game in front of me at the end of the game, and you're thinking, oh, this guy's a closer. You know, this guy needs a ball at the end, but he hasn't shown enough of that. So maybe this is a turning point this weekend. Hunt didn't see much out. 
Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Hunt turned five rebounds, four assists. He also had six turnovers, and mm. he was a plus eleven in twenty-five minutes. Yeah, well, he's just coming back, so he's allowed the turnovers, you know, because he's going to need to get into rhythm. Um, didn't see much out of Nixon, so we'll, we'll have to see. He, he looks like a bigger guard, more of a more of a, a scorer, less of a ball handler, um, than Allen was. So we'll have to see where he goes over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think he played eleven minutes, although I've not noted yeah. it down. Uh, let's go to Friday. Newcastle ninety-seven, Manchester eighty-five. Uh, I've gone all dark there, haven't I? Uh, still no Austin. Uh, Lee was back. Uh, Spencer played a minute and a half. Um, McGill, Green, Johnson, early threes. Eagles looking smooth offensively out to a 17-8 lead inside four minutes. I don't think you're going to be talking about the offense here, Dave. Are you saving that for the next I thought the first half of this game was awful. Uh, I'm sorry, I was watching it in the gym, and I hate being negative, and I wonder sometimes if this is eating me alive, and not just within Newcastle, but watching everybody. Um, but I thought it was a mistake, a mistake fueled first half. Um, yeah, people made shots and, and okay, but that throws they're meant to make shots, you know. Um, every time Newcastle have started off this season playing well, scoring the ball, it has led to an immediate drop in the defense when they all they get happy and and think, oh man, we're scoring, whatever, uh, you know, and making threes, and everybody's happy. And then suddenly you look at the end of the score, but it's score, but then the first quarter, and it's 32 28. Um, I just thought it was um, uh, as, as a kind of generality across the league. I'm I'm really quite frustrated watching the amount of teams and players who just seem to have no idea which is the strong hand of the player that they're guarding. They have no idea where. Um, the player that they're guarding wants to go, whether they want to... Basically, every professional basketball player, every professional basketball player prefers some the best ones by very little margins, but the, the, the ones at certain levels by a significant margin, prefers to put the ball down first with one of their hands. They, they generally either want to put the ball down first with their right hand or put the ball down first with their left hand. It's all about your body shape and the way that you move. And you have you have to know that. You have to know which way you're closing out. And you have to know where the, the, your teammates are on the court. And you have to keep people away from where they want to go. I commented last week about Jaron Holmes against Newcastle getting to the middle at will. Um, and I saw that throughout this game for both teams. Um, I saw missed, um, missed rebounding assignments. Um, I saw blown pick and roll coverages. The only thing, the only way that Manchester could score in the first like four minutes was um, Jamel... Anderson dribbling to the middle on his right hand and and then um, throwing the, the lob up to legend. You know, and you think, well, that's a nice play. But, but what's happened is because he's been allowed to get to the middle, Defoe is stuck in the middle with Robertson behind him and Anderson in front of him. And whilst most guys in the league you can defend by just kind of hanging back enough because they're normally six foot nine, Robertson's seven foot one, so you can't do that. Mm. Now, you t- if all it takes is for, for the Eagles to... Um, take Jamel away from his right hand because Jamel, other than likes to dribble from from the top with his right hand, uh, and keep more importantly, keep him out the middle of the floor. If you keep him out the middle of the floor, that player's dead. Yeah, it happened three times. Mm. You know, and it's and I'm looking at it thinking, you know, you know, you have to be able to adjust quicker mentally, um, with your um, um, understanding of defensive assignments. Um, and so whilst it was forty nine fifty one. And yeah, and, and and yeah, Eagles are scoring the ball all right. And you know, Jordan Johnson is probably the only one with any degree of presence on the court outside of Darius. Um, the whole first half just kind of passed me by. I, I can't let me let me let me remind you of it. Stampley three point play. Lewis back to back threes. Giants eleven in a row to twenty one twenty six. Uh, just before I move on to the next bit, thirty seconds into the second quarter. Lawton picks up his third foul. Delpesh was well inside the uh, no charge circle, and the guy yeah. and Lawton was going up, so that can't be yeah. an offensive foul. So uh, just one there for Lawton because he obviously averages a lot of fouls, but that one was uh, unfortunate. That would have been at the far end from me. I'm right at the other end. Yeah, but, no, but you could it. see on the on the. Uh, I well, saw for it. obvious reasons. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Yeah, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw it in real play, and then I was like, I'm sure his feet were inside. And then they showed the replay, and they were well inside. Um, 
Lee with a three. Manchester's lead peaked at 29.38. Three minutes in. They stayed in front till half time, but Johnson had 18 first half points to cut it back to two. 49.51. Yeah, Lee. I mean, obviously, it's good to see Lee back. He wasn't all there. If I can put it that way. His game wasn't all, all where it had been, obviously. Um, he's a little bit short on some of his his shots, a little bit tentative on some of his um, movements. But he's clearly going to help him a lot if he is, um, if he's able to, to string a period of games together. Um, second half, there was a bit more intensity about the Eagles, I think, um, defend, particularly defensively. And to be absolutely fair to them, um, the two guards are playing a lot of minutes mm. um, and they're playing a lot of games because Austin's out and they don't really have another ball handler outside of Johnson and McGill. Uh, my concern is more kind of the the, the backside, the, the defence on the backside is at times um, not where they need to be. You know, at times Green, uh, the, one call, the one call, actually, Green didn't play much defence in the first half. The only time he did, he got called for, he got called for a block, which was a charge um, on the baseline. And, um, you know, and Del Pesce is struggling. He's struggling with... Um, Finishing, he's not. Fin he's not finishing. He's not offensive rebounding the way he was. He looks like he's thinking far too much, um, and, and just not going out and just doing the things that he's good at. Um, Manchester, they they continued, but their their rotations got a bit mixed up. I thought um, Robertson didn't really play much after the, the middle of the third quarter, which was surprising. Um, I'm not a fan of the Nick Lewis at point starting point guard experiment. Um, not that Nick Lewis can't play the starting point guard, I think he probably can, but I think you take away what he gives you as your your game breaker mm. off the bench, and you've got a starting point guard in both here, and you've got another two American point guards in Harrison and McNeil. So you know how many in, in, in Nick Lewis is your starting point guard? That seemed to me impacts him in a, in a way which doesn't assist your team, um, and then they just. As the Eagles' defense got a little bit better, and, and Manchester's um, struggled to score the ball inside, um, they kind of gradually stepped away from them, and, um, made, and they made some shots. And Waterbit made some shots, which is vital for them because they need to get points out of Waterbit or Whitfield. And generally, it's one on one off. Do we want to talk about 40, 44.3.3? 44.3.3, oh, the ref, yeah, the, yeah, why not? The, um, there was another one. This time, I, I, I think I managed to sort it out with, with, with smoke signals with the ref. Yeah. Um, but it appears that for some reason they told Lawton to go and shoot a foul shot. Yeah. After a timeout. So, so just to explain it, there was a there was a foul called uh, around the media timeout, and yeah. the foul was on Stam. Stampley was fouled. Yeah, they obviously go into the was, media but, timeout. Yeah. Stampley lines up on the line. The referee says, no, no, no. Lawton, yeah. you have to shoot the free throw. So he goes, shoots the free throw, misses it. Presumably the table goes, by the way, it was number five right. that should have been shooting. Yeah. The referee goes, my fault. Swap it back round. Yeah. We'll ignore that shot took place. And uh, Stampley... Yeah, you, we'll, you... We'll, we'll, we'll go on the um, the old good good chat room, mm. basically. Um yeah, it's 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 untidy. It's not great. I mean, as I say, now, the, now I've been told because uh, I've done a bit of research into this. Well, I've been told that's what they're supposed to do because they should the rep they they should never enforce forty three point three point three because uh, they should never get it wrong. They should always have the right person on the line. Yeah, but when yeah, but that's that's like saying you should, you should never call a foul because the players don't, don't no you know. no but you can as a referee if the wrong person is on the line you can say it's not your shot and then only if he persists in shooting it well i think that's a mess that person yeah well i think that's the wrong way around i think either the rule says the player has a responsibility to go to, to make sure he's at the foul line um or it doesn't i don't like the idea of the referees um dictating that I think the referee can tell the coach this is a technical foul shot coach or this is an unsports night foul shot coach if the coach has put the wrong players on the line then it's their fault um but in this case it was the referee who put the wrong player yeah I got no problem with what happened because ultimately you, you got to the laws of natural justice that's fine you know no one's gonna kick up a fuss about that um but I don't like I just don't think the um the ref should be involved or the table should be involved in um 
notifying the shooter who's shooting. If that if you're gonna have that rule, if you're gonna have that rule, if it's a violation for the wrong guy to shoot. So in a, and if, if if as you say the rule's not is not ever meant to be enforced, well take it out. You know, don't why have a rule if it's not meant to be enforced? That makes no sense to me at all. Well, it's not meant to it's not meant to get to the point where the wrong shooter that's shoots. Not. That's every rule. That's every rule. It's there to deal with backdrop. It's every lawyer's dream. You know, you have all of all the fine print just in case all these ridiculous things that are never ever gonna happen might happen. Mm. Well, it did happen. Um so yeah, so I well, it is what was what it was. I mean uh they both missed the free throw anyway, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Around the fourth quarter break, McGill three, Johnson and one, Ward Hibbert three, now Neighbor three, Eagles turn a 64-64 tie into a 78-67 lead, and that was basically the decisive move in the game. Yeah, I mean, Manchester made a few shots back, but their, their offense just kind of, I didn't think they quite had the line. As I say, the lineups were, were quite right. They've now got um, probably a surfeit of players there, and he's going to have to figure out which ones are the ones that he's, he's going with. Um, they also, because Harris didn't play much, um, and Walsh didn't play much. They didn't have what you would describe as like a certified bucket getter at the end. They didn't have anybody that um you got Bosi and Lewis playing together. Um and Jamel, but they didn't have anybody that could just throw the ball to them to get them to get them a basket. So they came, they got a bit stuck betwixt and between, I thought. Um and Newcastle just about did enough. Um and, and as I say, the guards are playing 30 plus minutes each. Um, so they are holding themselves back, I think, a little bit in relation to the game. So maybe they saved a bit of energy back for the fourth quarter and, and did enough um, to um, do it. Um, Defoe was my plus 19, I think, in this game. He was. <laughs> yeah, plus 19. There we go. In 20 minutes, was it? 20 minutes. 20 minutes you know, like just presence, court presence. Uh, Johnson, 23 points, 10 fouls drawn. I had a game on uh, uh, Wednesday night where a player got uh, a double-double and 10 fouls drawn, and I hypothesized on Twitter, does that count as a triple-double? Triple double. I mean, now you had triple-double in Europe. I mean, you had, you had 15, 10, and 9 in Europe as well. Um, he's a little bowling ball of a player. I mean, he can bounce. You know, generally, you, you, when when guards kind of get hit by bigs at the back at the basket, it's the it's the guards that fly off in all directions. Mm. But with Johnson, the guy he hits flies off just as far. Mm. You know, um, he's he's actually showed a lot of um, presence, a lot of mental, a lot of will. I think to, at times he's been the one thing that's kind of keeping them afloat. And, and him and yeah, him and Defoe are the two who get plus marks at the moment. So he had a faux, uh, a faux double double and seven assists and ten of ten from the free throw line from those ten yeah. fouls drawn. Uh, McGill twenty one points, uh, five of six from three, seven assists. Ward Hibbert twenty points, six rebounds, uh, four assists. There were eleven of twenty five from three and twenty two of twenty nine from the free throw line. Yeah, it's uh, weird to see how they shoot tonight after a damn yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lewis 16, Stampley 15 and 7, Harris 11, Lee 9 points, 4 rebounds in 16 minutes 40 on his return. Uh, they were 10 of 29 from three, so not far off, but 13 mm -hmm. of 20. A lot of them were in the first half, though, Dan, mm -hmm. and then a couple at the end when they were chasing, they didn't make the shots when they needed to. Uh, Leicester Riders 95, London Lions 102, Bowman, uh, is out. Law is back. Uh, Decker and Philip uh, were out for London. Uh, early stages of the game. Matt Morgan to the rim. Connor Morgan hitting threes. Olusani inside. London showing what they can do offensively, and they're out to a, a 25-14 lead after six minutes. Yeah, I mean they were really, really good, you know, and um, offensively, particularly those guys um, who are higher, higher level players than the league. It's the league that's in front of them. Um, Connor Morgan in particular doesn't look like he's ever going to miss a shot, or even kind no. of, or even a kind of shoot one which doesn't go straight in through the back by the back rim. You know, it's mm. um, it's fundamentals are so so sound, and obviously Matt Morgan has this kind of switch we've seen whereby he is the smoothest, fast player we've ever seen. Mm. You know, we've seen muscular fast players in this league before who were really really fast. You know, who were built like. Um, a bit like units, you know. Um, but he is the smoothest one insofar as he doesn't look like he has that speed in him. Mm -hmm. 
You know, he's he's, he's streamlined. He's so quick, and his ability once he gets downhill on that right hand, and DM yeah, because he's got no chance. Um, but Leicester, Leicester rode the storm. Um, and the thing about Leicester is their offense is really good. You know, they've got a five starting the all, all the American guys have all got their skill sets, which kind of dovetail together. Um, and they're comfortable with what they do, and they don't rarely they rarely go outside of their skill sets, which is why they get good shots. Um, so they got a great, they got the probably the best game from Asbury this in this game. Um, he really took the challenge um, on the London guys. Got you know he's probably the first guy, probably the only guy this season to block Matt Morgan coming off a curl on a baseline inbound. I don't yeah, think yeah. That's well, because I was sat on the baseline, I was like, how have you let? Oh, he's blocked it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't imagine anyone's going to get close to that this year. I'm very surprised. I'll keep and, an eye on. And deceptive. I hadn't noticed how good a rebounder he was until, uh, until I saw that game. Oh, he's athletic. He's, yeah, he, yeah. he's, he's a kind of a, he's, he's an interesting guy. He's probably a little bit small to be a three and D guy, um, but that's what he is. If you know what I mean? He's not a six six NBA three and D guy, but he's kind of a six three BBL three and D guy because he's athletic. He gets around. He's not the greatest dribbler in traffic. But if he's open, he can shoot the ball as well. But you know, his his battle is mental. His battle is going to be mental because anybody can get up for the the big game against the big team on the TV. You know, all of that stuff. It's where he's going to be tonight against Cheshire. That that kind of impacts how his future is going to go because he has a, he has a very high upside. Um, but you know, that's only upside worth nothing unless you put it into practice. It, yeah. Um, so but, M- yeah, yeah. Mackenzie and Washington come into the game. Leicester have a 10-2 run. It's down to down to three points. Um, <clears throat> it was still just three before half time, but the Morgans turned that into eight. And I thought big big three from Mackenzie and then that play on the buzzer from Asbury where he steals it and dunks yeah. it in important for Leicester psychologically, only only down three yeah. and a half. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that psychological stuff. I think, you know, you look at the scoreboard and you start again. I never really kind of figured on, on it. Well, even just not being eight down. Not being eight down. Being yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The difference between eight and three, yeah. 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 Different numerically, I get I absolutely agree with that. Um, because, But uh, there's a kind of another subplot to this, and it kind of goes against the established narratives with these teams. Um, Leicester, half, with like three minutes to go in the first quarter, Leicester had their five subs on the court. Mm. And they were, and that's a very, very capable BBL team. That are five subs because that's um, Washington, Washington McKenzie, Walker, Ado, Lull, and Lull. and Ado. Yeah, right. That's that's, that's, that's that. Oh, in, in alternative universe, that's a BBL starting five. I'm not quite sure how they were probably certainly better than mid table BBL starting five, right? Um, depending on what comes behind them, right? Um, London don't actually have that many players. But we were kind of sold on London having this, all this depth, etc. But in reality, they've got about the same. They've got 10 when they're all healthy, 10 or 11, who you'd regard as um, that type of group. But because obviously they're not all healthy because they've been playing lots of games and, and also, or, or watching some of them if they when they choose not to play them, um, they, they've also had to bring in a couple of young guys. Mm. Um, and, you know, Kaposa and Sandy, in particular, they played in this game, and if you're looking um, at across all the lineups, right, they would be players 19 and 20 that you would pick out of the whole out of the whole group because of their level of experience. Um, and so it actually this actually was, game became kind of Leicester's depth against London's against London Stars, if I can put it that way. And I mean, even Coach Bosic, and I'm not picking on Kabosa and Sandy. Coach Bosic said it, I think, in an interview a couple of weeks ago after the game, said, Oh, they got a long way to go. Yeah, well, they have, of course they have. But again, you know, but we've seen players before substantially improve because of the level of the player that are playing around them. Um and I thought that was really interesting because obviously Bowman, Bowman would have been Leicester's eleventh player, but they have, you know, 10 really solid guys. And the way Rob was kind of running them was running, he's almost he's not mixing and matching them too much. No. They're running in. They're running in. Well, there was years. one point. Was it in the third quarter? Where it was literally five on five off. Uh, yeah, which is very rare in in, in yeah. pro basketball. And I mean, obviously, at some point, he, he has to make a decision in every game between McKenzie and Pinson. That's generally where we're at. Sometimes it's both of them, mm-hmm. and then Washington sometimes gets squeezed in the second half because it's difficult to find minutes for four guards in the in a half. You know, but um, so, I thought. Sorry, go on. Go on. 
I was no. just going to say in the in the in the second half, uh, London didn't make a field goal until the midpoint of the third quarter, but nine for ten from the free throw line uh, in that time to stay within a shot of Leicester and the fouls mounting yeah. up against Bridges. And yeah, the, and this is this is obviously Leicester's like. Achilles' heel because that then the starting five is still not good defensively. You know, they gave up twenty five early, and then in, in defending without fouling. Um, you know they fit better offensively than than they do defensively, and and that's kind of those that the juggle that you've got to find, um, as a coach because I think you got it right in this game because, you know, with London you can't go on this drought. You, you the only way you can compete with them is to stay close to them, is to keep scoring the ball. You have to keep scoring the ball. Um, I, I mean I saw that myself at Newcastle, you know, three weeks ago when Newcastle was twenty twenty after four minutes and then couldn't score for six minutes and the game was done. It was a twenty point game. It was finished. Um, so what Leicester did a good job of was was staying connected and making shots, and and London will let you make shots if you if you if you if you're in your rhythm enough, and if you're um, committed enough to shooting the right shots. So people like McKenzie coming in with a per, with a mind, you could see his mind was locked into that game, and he was looking for his shots and he was knocking them down, and and um, actually I thought the game turned at the end of the third quarter. Um, and I thought those are the minutes where Leicester had to win them, and they didn't, because London were buying minutes basically with their lineup at the time. And um, I think they had Nelson, Sandy, Caboza, Justice, and maybe Grantham. Maybe I can't remember the, fourth, the fifth guy. And I'm looking at the line, and they let Luke Nelson. I think Luke Nelson scored maybe nine consecutive points, yeah, yeah. made a three, so couple of runners. Yeah, McKenzie and one, McKenzie three points, Leicester up four with 1.30 to go in the third quarter, and then London had the next seven points to lead 73-76, and as you say, that was led by uh, Luke Nelson. Three and that's the game with it, sorry, that's the game within a game as well, because for me, I'm looking at that lineup at that point as it's on, and this game is on now, you know, um, coaches having to rest the Morgans, Alessandri's on the bench, Um these guys, you know, you've you've kind of got your your hand on the neck a little bit, hand on the throat a little bit. You've got more depth if you're Leicester. But what you can't do in that situation is let Luke Nelson shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes you and it's tough because you're dealing with players who are programmed not to do this, but you know, sometimes it's a matter it, it, it's as simple as you know, you ignore somebody. You 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 plant in the, you plant Kieran Sandy's defender in the middle of the paint. I Meaning as soon as Luke Nelson drives, he doesn't have that little floor, he's going to throw it to Kieran Sandy. If Kieran Sandy makes a three, you put your hands up and you say, yeah, good job. Good job. But until you make one, or until you make two, I'm not going to treat you the same way that I'm going to treat Luke Nelson. Mm. Right? And, you know, it, at that point in time, I thought that, you know, two or three stops, and then unless they get to eight or nine, and that's kind of the only time we've seen London bend this year in the BBL is when Newcastle got the 12 or 14 mm. and they had the two bigs on the court and they weren't quite sure what they were doing before Morgan came in and rescued them. Um, if they got them to eight or nine, that might have happened again because then coach has to decide how quickly do I put my these guys back in the game and, mm. and you know, and everything, all, all the best laid plans are kind of done and they didn't. And I thought Luke Nelson, I mean, he made some tough plays, but, you know, in, in a perfect world, you'd be trapping the ball out of his hands, you'd be doing something to make sure that one of those other guys made a play. And Justice can play, obviously, he's only played two games, he, he can play, so he's not like he's a he's a scrub who can't, you know, he doesn't need to be on the court. But I didn't like the fact that Nelson was able to to be the one who was able to beat them at that point. Uh, 3.39 to go, offensive foul called on Ola Senny, but then Pinson is called for a technical foul, which was his fifth. Matt Morgan makes the Free throw, and then a minute later, it's a dagger three to make it 87-95 with 2.15 to go. Yeah, difficult to know. Obviously, didn't see the technical foul. Um, I, I'm sat on the baseline. I couldn't hear it. Couldn't hear what right. he said. So, I know he got a warning in the first half, but for me, I'm just like... Get on with it. Yeah, yeah. get on with it, whatever. Yeah. It's not like nothing was... There was the, the advantage of sitting where I've sat. I've never sat yeah. on the baseline that close before. Is you you hear everything <clears throat> that's being yeah. discussed, and the idea that you know he was saying something out of character to everybody else is 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 well, it's a fallacy. Yeah, it? yeah, sounds a bit weird. Yeah, um, yeah, um, well, Matt Morgan, as you say, stepped up and you know knocked down that shot, and unfortunately, it was that the, the, the one team you don't want to get into a scoring race with on your own court, yeah. and, and um, they they also have this kind of 
confidence in their own ability to win or, or to play at the end of the games, particularly Morgan and, and, and Morgan. Um, Olaseni as well, I would put in that. I mean, look, Olaseni. able is, to hear him from the baseline. Yeah, I mean, Olaseni is. Um, he is perpetually underrated. I've banged on about this when we've done the GB stuff in the past. You know, he is a Rolls Royce of a centre. You know, just you, just everything he does is, he, uh, you know, we we had you know Kufos last year, ex NBA player, this that and the other. All, all the is twice what Kufos was. Mm. You know, I'm not, I can't. Uh, you you're going back to Lauren Meyer. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, and Lauren Meyer was a stretch. He, he used to shoot the he used to shoot the ball, and he's probably not as, as as suited to the modern game as all the Um, since then, in relation to to centers in our league, you know, and, and the fact that he is clearly. A, a solid citizen, London guy. You know, he speaks very well. He's spoken very well for the GB all the time. He, he's just an absolute um, diamond um, to have in the league. And I think we should appreciate him. Mm. Um, I mean, the um, the rest of them, well, they're here, you know, Americans are going to be mm. setting the paychecks, you know, but where's the money, where's the paycheck coming from? And where am I going to play? And, you know, and, and Matt Morgan, like every every American of his level is going to want to be back in the NBA. You know, fine, good for him. But someone like all of a sudden he coming back to, to the UK and playing the way he does, and he shows up every night and he does all the things he's meant to do. He's remarkably efficient and he plays with a competitive spirit as well, you know, so and does very little daft. So, yeah, I like him a lot. Um, but they just know how to win at the end. And, and, and Leicester kind of didn't. Leicester just kind of didn't. But I don't blame them for that. I mean, they gave London their best shot. Yeah, I, mean, um, I, don't, I don't think Leicester could play much better than that. To be honest, well, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of defensive understanding. I think at the right times, that's the problem. You know, you give up 102 points, you're going to struggle. Um, you know, if you can knock, you can knock you know, 12 of those points off. You can get maybe a few less silly fouls, just contested. Well, I suppose them that's the, that. That's the thing is London end up with 28 fouls and uh, or Leicester commit 28 fouls and London go 25 for 29 from there. Yeah, you know, and that's it. You know, fouls in the penalty, that type of stuff. The cheap points are the ones that hurt you. It's always the cheap points. End of the quarter. End of the quarter has always hurt you. Um, but that was a good game. Fun, fun yeah. game. Yeah, it uh, was, yeah. I, I, I mean, suppose it, the, the one pushback was I thought in the third quarter there was a couple of fouls that from my vantage point, which was very close on the baseline, that you yeah. sort of think, well, that's not really. One of them, Ola Sonny had the ball stripped out of his hands. And yeah. the referee on the baseline went, I was looking at the ball, the ball was clean, but the referee on the wing called something else. Um, and then there was another one where Ola Sonny appeared to travel before he got fouled. And obviously that's four free throws at a time where they couldn't make a field goal. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Um, to be honest, I can't remember. But what I will say is that if you're the aggressor, you get calls. Mm. Um, and it's difficult to guard all the city. Yeah, it's difficult to guard Morgan because the best players, they know how they know how to draw fouls as well. So sometimes you get they get called and they perhaps they shouldn't get because they're so good and they understand where the ball needs to be to get them. You know, and, and the one thing I would say, um, because I said it to my wife while I was sat next to her. Is if you're half a step off Connor Morgan, it's a three, and if you're half a step off Matt Morgan, he gets the rim. And yeah, that, absolutely. The they just they just instantly you can't. Yeah, I mean, I have to say that was a good shot for the. It was a good night for the old um, TV crew paparazzi hunters, wasn't it? With you on the baseline and Lasky on the sideline. <laughs> oh, I mean, I've got a bit of a Jack Nicholson in there. Um, <laughs> the couch, you know, it was, it was particularly how it was all the great and good were there. Yeah. You know, I hope Russell got the red carpet out. Yeah. yeah. So let's go to Saturday. So oh, sorry, called... what was the um, what was the unsportsman like at the end? So, because we couldn't see that on the TV, that disappeared. The unsportsman like at the end. I Asbury. Did Asbury get an unsportsman like at the end on a? On oh, a, I, yeah, that was, yeah. I I don't know. It was. All right. I don't know. And we couldn't see it. We didn't see yeah. the TV. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't give the scorers in that, did I? Holmes, 18. It was one of them where it, it, it was at the other end of the floor for me, so it's hard to tell whether it was worth it or not. But he, he's tried to foul to stop the clock, and he's yeah, just right. gone a bit high and sort of caught him across the chest or maybe near right. the throat or something. A bit high. What, like yeah. head-to-head contact? Often well, it, it wasn't quite that. <laughs> it was one of them where you just 
you go to grab him and you, if you don't get it right. Yeah. Uh, Holmes, 18 points, 8 assists. McKenzie, 17 points, 5 assists. Thought he was great. Asbury, how about this for a stat line? 16 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals, 3 blocks. Yeah, what's his baseline? Yeah. Well, yeah. He has to be that every game. Yeah. Uh, Grantham, uh, 22 points and 11 rebounds. Uh, Matt Morgan, 21 points, 7 fouls drawn, 9 of 10 free throws. Uh, Olaseni, 20 points, 7 fouls drawn, 8 of 8 free throws. Uh, And that was that. So let's go to Saturday. Surrey Scorchers, 80. Bristol Flyers, 75. Uh, They've confirmed Keedy Johnson's broken his wrist, so he's out for 6 to 7 week sorry still without the guys who were missing from the thursday game um a run of threes from my mate quinn hunt and lawrence had surrey from five down to four up 20 uh to 16 they do they do seem to always lead in the first quarter sorry yeah is it me i mean does does, does quinn have the look of kind of the bat the basket the third basket the third chuckle brother who plays basket <laughs> Yeah, it's that kind of that uh, right, you know, the, yeah. the Ricky Hatton in him as well. But you know, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. Um, unfortunately, with Quinn being American, you'll not understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll probably yeah. not come after me. Um, yeah, they, they, they do well. They, they, they never, um, oh, they rarely start out unre- not ready to play. Sorry, um, because they run their stuff. You know, they're quite methodical in the stuff that they run. And the shots that they look for, and they know where they're coming from. The, their issue in the games has always been their ability to figure stuff out on the fly, in relation to um, both who they need to be guarding, how they need to be guarding people, and the personnel that they they have on the court. And as I say, that can often come with having so many players that that role um, definition becomes um, confused. So, you know, from that perspective, you know, the starting five has always done okay. Whoever it is, they're generally ready to play. And obviously, Cooper is an absolute, you know, he's, he is JJ Reddick of the big yell. Mm. You know, he moves, you know, he doesn't, he really doesn't look for uh, anything other than a, a space to get his shot off. He's undersized, so he has to do it with his quickness and his footwork, as opposed to with, you know, with, um, he doesn't have the ability, for instance, that Matt Morgan has to, to be able to step back to create space and say, come and guard me if you dare. You know, Cooper has to curl around screens and he has to get space that way. So that's why I say he's more like Reddick. He doesn't have the off the dribble game. Um, but he can shoot, no question. He can shoot. And shooters need to shoot and shooters need rhythm and shooters need confidence. And in and you don't get that if you're playing three minutes, miss a couple of shots, and you come out. Mm-hmm. And that didn't happen in this game because he's got his role and because um they're a little bit less ball with Wang at the point guard, they're a little bit less um high screen role dominant. You know, it's not it's not constant high screens with, with Robinson and Gooden. Um, Wang is having to throw the ball at the wings a little bit, so they're having to run people, run him and steal off curls and having to throw the ball inside a little bit more. And that made them actually look a little bit more of a balanced team um, because there's more size on the court defensively um, when they don't have the guards. It's going to hurt them in times, as I say, when it, when it hurts them with with them um, with the decision making and their ability inability to get shots at times. Um, but in, in this game, it certainly helped them. And um, Bristol, to be fair, Bristol, you know, they're going through the whole European thing as well. They've got they've had a lot of games. They've had Kenny Johnson down, Raul Graham Bell just coming back, and then they lost to John Lucas halfway through yeah. with like a hamstring. So um, let me, let's just get there. Bristol with a 10 0 run to lead 23 30 in the second quarter. Surrey 14 3 replied to 37 33. And then the first play of the third quarter, Lucas sort of slipped on defense and he ended up close to doing the splits. And he, he, he looked like he did his hamstring in that. He was hobbling about for about 10 seconds until the game stopped yeah. and then he came out. But it yeah, didn't look it didn't. great. No, it didn't. Um, and that's a massive, you know, you know, I say, you know, every. Every BBL team's one injury away from getting better and two injuries away from disaster. Um, and this is a pretty tough one because Lucas has really come into it. He's kind of the third head of the three headed monster with Jacob and, and Ollison on the wings. You know, you forget about any of them and they're going to impact you. They're going to put pressure on you and they're going to be in the passing lanes as well. Puts a lot onto Ollison, puts a lot onto Samuels. That's probably a little bit more than they need at this point in time. Um and 
the game kind of played out with you waiting to see who was going to who was going to make the run and waiting to see whether sorry we're going to crumble basically not for any other reason and that's what they've shown that's what they've, they've done doing that uh, Flyers had an 11-0 run, five for Jacob to 54-62, early fourth. But again, Surrey came back and, and, and leveled the game. Let's get to the end of it. Two thirty. Jacob makes more. Jacob makes more hard shots than anybody. Yeah, doesn't he? yeah, yeah he does. I mean, just, just like the Craig. He I mean, like, he, 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 no, no, no. Good shot. Player yeah, he's, like, he's, like, he's, like, he's rising up backwards from the yeah. from the third row of the stands to throw one over his shoulder and it goes in. So, yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I could coach him because I just, yeah. but, but anyway, yeah, if you're shooting 30, all you do is look at the numbers at the end. If you're shooting yeah. for 39, you could coach him, yeah, shoot, yeah, 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 yeah. You really couldn't coach him, <laughs> that's the yeah. bottom line, yeah. Um, Ra uh, Raf Thomas Edwards, corner three, uh, 69 69, 230 to go. Both teams then missed a couple of shots, um. Uh, Thomas Edwards again fouled after a rebound, two free throws, 69 71 with 139. Yeah, and at this go. point, I was just thinking, you know, maybe, maybe Raph Thomas Edwards in particular, maybe Bristol just a little bit more battle hardened and a little bit more mentally ready because, you know, Raph Thomas Edwards gives that impression of somebody who um, puts a lot of thought into the, the game, plays with a degree of physicality, but is also ready for the moment. You know, he generally has his best games when it's when things are on the line. And those players made me think, yeah, okay, maybe here we go again. Uh, 126 to go. Nice pick and roll action. Lawrence to Jameson, 71 70. Yeah, it was a nice little lob. It was a nice, well drawn up play. Lawrence actually played well in the fourth quarter. It's just, um, just times that you want to see. I just want to see a little bit more rah rah out of him. Uh, Orlison gets to the rim after Lawrence gambled on a steal. After Lawrence gambled, and that's yeah. what I mean. I was yeah. about to say that after Lawrence gambled on a steal, that was a horrific gamble. Yeah. Could not make that. You know, he gambled on a steal probably 10 feet outside the three point line, left his team with nowhere to go. Absolutely stuffed his team. Mm. Can't do that with a minute and a half to go. A uh, minute 12 to go, 71 yeah, 73. Uh, 58.7 seconds to go. Wang almost loses the ball. Picks yeah. it back up and swishes the three, 74, 73. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, live and die. Yeah. Uh 43 seconds to go. Allison misses a deep, but but probably open three. Um, and then 21. Yeah. Hey. They haven't actually made many shots in this yeah. game. I thought Bruce, I thought at one point when, when Lucas went down, I think it was like three consecutive air balls, and you just got kind of the impression that they were just their legs had gone. Mm. Bristol, that they were just kind of running out of you know, running out of whatever had been sustaining them. Um, and sometimes it happens when you run out of bodies, you know, there's only so many guys you go to. Yeah, and then the next play, yeah. Next play, 21.8 seconds to go. Wang and uh, Jameson running the high pick and roll, and Ollison fights his way over the screen on I the first it one. That was a it Jacob. Was uh, it was and then they re-screened, and for some reason he went under it. And, Maybe and Wang had about eight feet of open court to knock down a three. Time to think about it, wave at his friends in the crowd, and he just made one. And and it was like, you know, no. Yeah, he's a pro, he's gonna make that shot. I'm sorry, he has to you know he's that, that that's everything's in his favor at that point. It's his home floor, he just made one. And he, you know, it wasn't even like the screen was was up close in his airspace either. The screen was about three feet away from him, so the defender was about four feet away from him. Yeah. You know, so it was almost like there, it was a dare to shoot. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to lose a game daring somebody to shoot when he's just made a three. He, he might only be a 27 percent three point shooter, but he's just made one he's on his home floor. I'm not daring. I'm. I'm not putting the game in the lap of the gods like that. I'm going to at least do something to try and change things. Um, and you know, to lose that way is, you know, is is mind bogglingly depressing. Yeah. You know, make him do something. Make you know, make him make a play. Um, you know, always let. Be be the aggressor, even defensively. You can be the aggressor. You can, you can take the challenge. You can get into a stance. You can say this is how you're going to beat us, and um, they did none of that. So they got what they deserved, I'm afraid. Of certainly whoever missed it went under the screen did. So seventy seven, seventy three, and that that was basically that. I mean, it played out with free throws and whatever, but they they never got the ball back down. Only a shot after that. Uh, Cooper, 23 points, 8 of 11 shooting, 5 of 8 from 3-point range. Wang, 18.6 assists. Lawrence, 14 points. They were 12 of 32 from 
three point range. Uh, Jacob make eighteen. Threes, point, yeah, hey? they have to make threes. Yeah, they have to. Uh, Jacob eighteen point six rebounds. Ollison fifteen points. Graham Bell thirteen point seven rebounds. Thirty four percent field goal shooting. Uh, Bristol thirteen offensive rebounds, but only six second chance points. Uh, let's go to East Kilbride, Caledonia Gladiators 73, Sheffield Sharks 64. Yeah, every time you say that, it reminds me of the old joke about the Welsh rugby team getting beaten by Western Samoa. What was that joke? I don't know. How would they do against the whole of Samoa? <laughs> how no, East Kilbride, I mean, you imagine what imagine how big the, the gladiators would be if they played in the whole of Kilbride. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the um, I don't know what Kilbride is. <laughs> is it the cool? The, the the wheeling with the first score and then threes from Nichols and Pipkin Sheffield twelve in a row to lead, uh, twelve twelve to two. Uh, Gladiators had a nine zero run to eighteen seventeen. It was pretty close in the first half, to be honest with you. Um, my sense of this game was basketball fatigue. What from you or from the team? From everybody. Yeah. I just felt it all. I mean, the whole this game kind of put a bit of. Uh, a pin in the wall in relation to all the things I've been banging on about. Um, the, the the scheduling, playing each other third time in four weeks. Um, two of the more attritional teams in the league anyway, playing each other third time in four weeks. The eight o'clock on a Saturday, you know, which is, I, I will not accept that, does not suppress the crowd numbers because, you know, there are about five or six hundred people in the gym. In what it was a nice slightly building. breaks my heart that because to me, basketball was always an eight o'clock on Saturday. Yeah, I know it was, but, but I think in the I, 80s, everybody played at eight o'clock on a Saturday. I just think culture and times have yeah, yeah. changed, and um, of course, didn't have TV timeouts and dragging yeah. the game out. Um, but um, that, and, and I just, I yeah, just we had we had the foul sideline ball, foul sideline yeah, ball, did, foul sideline yeah. ball, foul sideline ball. I will agree, and that had a beauty of its own, as you and I know. <laughs> the stack had a beauty of its own, um, halfway line stack. But yeah, I just thought, and I just felt that you know it was a seventy sixty type of game. Yeah. Um, and and at the moment, in relation to the game, um, I thought that, as I say two attritional teams. If anything, Caledonia are kind of built in Sheffield's image over the past few years. And but Caledonia are deeper, a little bit richer, more you know, more more size. And so and this game turned pretty much solely on the fact that Caledonia's centers had 31 points out of 73. They beat them inside. Ali Hodzic and Moore, um, 14 and 17 points each, scored 40% of the of the um Gadiet's points. And that's not something that's happening much around the league. No. But but the centers who are sharing minutes, so they're not they're not playing it with each other, or basically um, scoring the ball, and that made for a, you know, and that and the fact they played each other three times, and and the fact that they were it was a chippy game, and then the refs got involved, and the refs had to call quite a lot just to keep it all kind of ticking over and make sure nobody got involved with anything unnecessary, you know, it just kind of struck us as a. Hey, I'm sorry, Sheffield. I'm sorry for Sheffield. I'm sorry for Caledonia, but a bit of a non-event. Sorry, in my mind. Well, funnily enough, I've only got one more line that I've written down. Police are three uh, nine zero finished to the third quarter, gave them the biggest lead at fifty nine uh, forty eight, and Sheffield never really recovered from that. Yeah, I mean, from Sheffield's perspective, as I say, they just come become a slightly bigger, slightly deeper version of themselves. They didn't really get much out of Nixon. Nixon only played six minutes. So that's you know, you would hope, I think, if you bring a guy in for a second for a second game, you would you would be in a position to play him a bit more than that. But these games are hard and these games are, it's very difficult to kind of drop people in out of nowhere. Um yeah, I thought ultimately you see what Caledonia are becoming. I still think that they will struggle against teams with quickness. Sheffield really don't have that much off the bounce quickness. It's um primarily Ramsey, but Ramsey's not looking to get to the rim. So Ramsey's looking to facilitate for others. So Ramsey's looking for the for kind of the the, the pull ups and, and they're they're the shots that Caledonia can contest. Um I'm I'm really interested actually to watch to see what how Jordan Johnson does. Jordan Johnson's back at Caledonia next Saturday. Mm. Again, you know, against that team. Not not because it's his old club, but because 
his type of game of kind of getting the short pass and attacking is is kind of the one thing that um might be the kryptonite to the gladiators because they don't really have that quickness in the back or I think they've got I still think they could make an upgrade. I mean if they picked if they picked up for instance Al Jami Durham and they're not going to right but they picked him up in in January of last year right if they were to pick up someone like him and upgrade at that at that spot um then then you're looking at a team that is potentially you know, you know, getting as close to London as anybody else. Um, but I still think they're a little bit short of that. But what they do have is size. They have a, a good mentality. Um, they are clearly together. And they've got centres who are scoring the ball, which virtually nobody else other than London in the league has centres who are scoring the ball regularly to that degree. Mm. You know, Leicester, maybe Bridges, but he's not shooting. He's getting three, three or four shots a game. Cheshire are playing with a stretch five. Um, Plymouth, um, Levi is just is rebounding. He's not going to throw in the ball to get a basket. And Newcastle struggling with Del Pesci, not getting anything going inside. Um, Green at Bristol? Green at Bristol, yeah. Green at Bristol is probably the only one, and he's one. Mm. You know, and even he is a little bit more up and down. But... Um, and he gets his he gets probably more points of offensive rebounds than yeah, yeah, yeah. than um than the gladiators actually get their guys shots. Mm-hmm. You know, Moore and Holly Hodgidge are getting touches down low. Yeah. Um so, so it's a little bit of a throwback. And Coke, obviously, Bennett Coke. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, but apart from that, there's only probably four or five there's, there's probably only four or five guys. And so to have two of them on your team and to be yeah. utilizing them so well, you know, that allows them to um originate their offense from the post. Whereas virtually every other team in the league is originating their offense off the ball screen. You know, so it's kind of a little bit retro what they're doing, but it's working. So I've got no particular issue with it. And in fact, I think it would be helpful if some of the other teams actually started making more of an effort to get the ball in the post and just to go back a little bit to go forwards again. Um, Sheffield. Yeah, well, it's, it's very, it seems like a very sheffield kind of season. They're seven and six. They win a couple, they lose a couple. Um, they you think they've cracked it? They scored ninety five at home, then they saw sixty on the road. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, the, you know, the one thing that changed their dynamic in recent years, probably two, three, maybe in the COVID year, when when they signed down to Johnson, but two or three years ago, and he was a two guard who basically shot the ball every time he caught it, if you remember. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and yeah. um, he played at Bristol before that, but it was efficient, effective. And he gave them that kind of scoring kick um, outside of their system almost, which I think that they, they actually may have finished second in the league that year. I might, yeah, I might, they did, yeah. I might be, yeah. You know, which gave them kind of the, they won a lot of close games at the end that way with him. And I think they might be missing somebody like that again. Um, it's tough because you've got to try and blend them in but um, to what you're doing. But, you know, it's just a little bit samey. And if Ramsey and Pipkins aren't able to kind of Drag them up by the collar in the um, fourth quarter on the road in particular. They've struggled to score the ball and you can't win scoring 60. Or you really shouldn't win scoring 60. More 17 points, 7 of 11 shooting, 6 rebounds. Police are 14 points. Ali Hodgett, 6 of 8 shooting for 14 points and 7 rebounds. 22 of 26 from the free throw line, 3 of 13 from three. Oh, we uh, had them. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. We also had um, no call of the season in this game. Which one was that? That yeah, was the um the the, the one where um I think Ali oh, Odge got run somebody got ran over with their foot in, with their feet in the circle in the second. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 There was there was there was like, you know, blood, there was a police accident Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was um, inside the circle, so on the scene. He's inside the circle, so it should be a block. But uh, it, was like, it was like, oh great. You it know, doesn't this... have to be. It doesn't have it's to not... be a block. If it's a charge inside the circle, it can be a no call. I know in your league, you're a cup. It has to be a defensive foul. There was a lot of contact. The rest of it. You know, it there was, I mean, there was a couple of a couple of limbs flying off in all directions. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I thought, yeah. Good oh, no. no for me. I like that. Good job. No, I also thought there was a pretty, pretty. I mean, they, they changed the normal foul call to an sports night call in the second quarter. We got a little bit of it. Yeah, we got a little bit of a glimpse of it on the TV. Yeah, and it was yeah. like, really? That's not yeah. sports night. And every every time a post player fouls face for position, it's non sports night, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think they were a little bit over keen on that. But overall, it wasn't an easy game. I ref that. No, no. Uh, Nichols, uh, 13 points, but 5 of 17. Uh, Ram, uh, Pipkins, 12, but 3 of 11. 
Uh, Ramsey, 11, but 3 of 12. Uh, 32% field goals, and they missed 11 free throws as well, Sean. Yeah, and that's basketball. Inui, that's wrestling. Here we go again. Same team again. Seven and five game. 23 more games to go in the season. Playing at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night in, in the the more populated part of Kilbride. You know, it just, just, it just, it just didn't feel like a game that had any particular other than the snippiness because the teams had played each other, that had anything really on it. And as I say, so that's why it kind of mm, watched it through kind of complaining eyes. <laughs> so if you're watching on YouTube, things have got a bit strange. Yes, <laughs> I am in a car. Yes, I am driving back. But as you can tell from his wonderful badge there, Dave is prioritizing his 50th birthday over the audience so we're having to wing it a little bit and we recorded the early part of this show this morning and now we're going to do it on the m1 with a bit of luck this is above and beyond i mean it's, i mean i hope you show us i hope you show us top quality the, i've got the best chauffeur in the business if you need an elbow jumper making he can do that as well i'm just probably I'm just get good. a defensive rebound off a missed free throw as well I'm just waiting for the first wow when someone, when you, you know, a couple of cow, couple of cows come across your path or something. <laughs> yes, this could all end dramatically. Um, let's get into the action while we've got a bit of a signal here. Uh, so, so what were you doing? Sorry, sorry, briefly, Dan. So, so, sir, what were you doing when you crashed into the car? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we were recording a podcast. <laughs> yeah. I know a good criminal lawyer will help yeah, us out if there is a not problem. That good with a one. Not that good a one. <laughs> So let's start off with uh, what I assume will be a quick game to run through. Plymouth City Patriots 68, Newcastle Eagles 95, obviously still without Austin. Plymouth started okay. Johnson and Faulkner three-pointers, Levi inside. They were 10-6 up, and then the wheels came off. Yeah, au contraire. I could talk about this for hours. <laughs> um, yeah, they were um, – they, actually, I mean, I think Plymouth – Really, really were poor in this game. Um, insofar as that that togetherness, um, and that that the, the, the way that they, um, you know, PJ gave up on Faulkner in this game. He played seventeen minutes. And he's meant to be that he's a talisman. He's a guy who led them. Through. You know, he made his first three pointer, and he had his his, his stance out. You know, he seemed like yeah, he yeah. Play. So there's 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 still stuff going on there, which I'm not, I don't think we're all privy to. Um. So that they were they weren't great, but to be fair, you know the the, the defensive. F, I mean, this was a this was a, an absolute trap game for Newcastle. I've been on that bus from Newcastle to Plymouth. Mm. It is awful. I mean, you're getting it. You're getting on at ten o'clock in the morning. You're getting off at seven o'clock at night. You played the night before, and then you've got to go and play on the hard floor at three o'clock. It is um, a real trap game. It's a it's again. It's not a great situation. Newcastle have played Bristol twice and Plymouth once, and they've done three trips so mm. far. I mean. What's going on? You know, um, again, we've, we've said enough about the fixtures, so it was kind of a trap game. But um, well, Newcastle's defense and you guys commented on the commentary their their willingness to run people off the three point line after Johnson made the first couple. Also, the fact that Plymouth aren't probably as good as some of the other teams off the dribble. Mm. To be fair, that probably helps them a little bit. You know, they're not Leicester offensively, for instance, um, and they're certainly not London. But nevertheless, there, there was actually a commitment to doing it to say you're going to have to beat us inside. And they don't really have the the pieces to do that. You know, they can't beat enough, they can't make enough twos to beat you, I don't think. And the other thing was Newcastle got um incredible games out of Ward Hibbert and Whitfield. Mm. And really it's one of the two, um, or none of the two. And they those guys combined for 39 points and 20 rebounds and seven mm. out of ten threes. You know, that's that's gonna break a game open. Because, yeah. You know, you know, if you if you're getting that game out of both of them, then then uh, they did really well. Well, so, it was yeah. when Ward Hibbert came in, Johnson hit three, Ward Hibbert hit three, McGill hit three, 15 unanswered points, and they're, and they're 11 points up. Yeah, and you just didn't see the the verve in Plymouth. You know, you didn't see, you didn't see the, the you didn't, you, do you remember um, Levi getting many offensive rebounds no, no. compared to where he had been the last couple of games? And that, meant, you know, to be fair, you know, Del Pesce was a plus 28 in this game, mm. you know, and in the last, you know, I've been saying Defoe's high plus may as well. Well, Del Pesce is, is really, you know, handled the middle in this game as well. And um, you just didn't see much in the way of puzzle players from me. Extra, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, it was a little bit routine. And Newcastle had McGill and Neighbour going back. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, Miguel and the and, and neighbor in particular going back and and looking, you know, like he had a bit of a, 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 a something in his stride, you know, just mm. a little bit more of a pep in his stride, which he needs to be fair. Um, you talked about it on the. I mean, you, you basically you guys covered this all on the um on the on the, on the broadcast. I've just watched. I've been out this afternoon, um, watching a specially arranged screening of Space Jam by my family. Oh, nice! Indeed, yeah. Well, I've seen it before. You know, we all know that Michael wins in the end. <laughs> um, I'm more the Bill Murray character, really. Um, <laughs> so I came and just came back, watched it back. But you guys kind of nailed, nailed the commentary, and you you expect Plymouth to have a run in them, and they just did not yeah, have a run. Yeah, yeah. You got beat basically in every which way in this game. Yeah. Um, so Ward Hebbard really, pushed pushed it out to 16 they did get it back to eight early in the third we nailed the commentary row so that's the good news uh third quarter whitfield threes mcgill and green getting to the line nine three run 39 55 and they kind of melted away in the fourth quarter eagles were just hitting open threes and ran away with it yeah the point you got right was that newcastle getting better shots yeah I think that was Rowe got season. that right. Well, you know, I'll give him a shout out. Getting better shots than Plymouth, and they were knocking them down. Um, but you know, McGill, McGill's going to be fun to watch this year because I'm not sure he's a coach's dream. But there's a cut. There's sometimes he does things on the court which you think, woo. You know, mm. you guys, you highlighted on one of his replays is is in out around the back. You know, boom boom mm. layup like he was there, which is kind of Matt Morgan like, and he's certainly not mm. Matt Morgan. But you know, he just has this. And in this game, you know, he came off the screen a couple of times, made a couple of threes. Suddenly he's got, as you said, 23.8 rebounds, six assists, six turnovers. And the game is kind of fig- almost fixated on him. Mm. Um, so, and I think I'm really interested to see where he goes, where he goes with them, because him and Johnston have got a little bit of a, a good thing going there now. Mm. And um, and Austin, obviously, to come back as well, are going to have to blend him in without losing anything from Whitfield and Ward Hibbert, which is going to be... Um, not the easiest thing in the world, but I mean, it's a good. It's a great week for Newcastle. Tuesday, what, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. We talk about rest and travel all the time, and then they come out and win by thirty on the road against the rested Plymouth team. You know, so yeah. what, what do I know? Mm. Um, so it's a great week for them, and it may well be that you know all the strife that we were talking about in the last couple of weeks has basically basically been schedule related. Mm, maybe. Because if you you know if you throw in a you throw in a couple of games with Manchester and Plymouth at the beginning of the season, or yeah. you know, in the of the run of games that they had with Leicester and London and, and, and Sheffield or whatever, then maybe they win those games and everybody's just kind of a little bit a little bit um cooler off them. Alternatively, maybe that they've be they've had their feet to the fire, maybe that's helped them and they're gonna step mm. forward. I was really encouraged by this. I mean to, mm. to, to to win on the road in the BBL by thirty anywhere is good. To do it on the back of the trip they had is good and to hold the team to sixty odd. With, with the defense that they've been playing, you know, which hasn't really been, other than the last six quarters, close to what it needs to be, mm. that kind of shows that they're, that they're taking steps forward as a as a group. Sorry, my badge is just dropping. There we go. Yeah, and um, yeah, but Plymouth, yeah, you know, happy they beat London by twenty. They've they've yeah. cracked. They hadn't. No, no. Uh, Johnson eighteen point seven rebounds. Atwood twelve. Wiley. 11. They were 5 of 21 from 3, 17 turnovers. McGill, 23 points, 8 of 12 shooting, uh, 5 mm. rebounds, 9 assists. Ward Hibbert, 7 of 10 shooting, 20 points, 11 rebounds. Whitfield, 19 points, 4 of 5 for 3. Newcastle, 14 of 25 from 3 point range as a yeah, now, now, but now it's on, you know, ultimate, you know, they've done, Ward Hibbert's played really well against possibly the two weakest teams in the league in Manchester and Plymouth. Mm. Yeah. Um, so he now he's got to start. He's got to produce it, you know, against the better teams as well. Mm-hmm. In fact, a few of them do. So we'll see where where we get to. But there, I mean, the one, I mean, they beat Plymouth on Friday night, and they're six and seven. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, and what's Leicester six and six? You know, yeah, so yeah. you know, so Sheffield seven and six. You know, so there's a lot of drama going on for really not much, mm. not much difference. Mm. So yeah, no, that was really, really, really that was encouraging. I'm, I'm kind of chuffed. Well, let's come to the other game then, Cheshire. <laughs> Phoenix 102, Leicester Riders 96. Uh, Knicks came out firing. They're hitting threes. It looks like the first game all over again. They're 20 to uh, 20 to eight up, and and Leicester's bench, uh, Leicester starters can't stop, can't score. Well, Leicester starters came out after four minutes. That's yeah. I, mean, yeah, I know yeah. he's still basically five for five before, but you generally do that when they're tired together. Yeah, if you're with them. 
and when and, and when they um they weren't tired, they just they just didn't. I mean, they, they made a couple, they made some shots, um, Cheshire. But you know, the last one was you know Jack in the corner, wide open. Mm. You know, and and you know even the sky, the white one in the corner, it was just, it was it was off a kick out. But if you're locked into your scouting report the first few minutes of the game, that you shouldn't be giving that up. Mm. Um. Sky, yeah, um, Skyler White is has the most gravity of any thirty four percent three point shooter I've mm, ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he changes literally changes. He doesn't actually. Like, he has to say thirty four, thirty five percent, which for the uninitiated is just about average. Mm. You know, like if you're below thirty five percent, you reach and shouldn't be shooting many. If you're above thirty five percent, you're a, a positive for mm. your team. And he's about that, but he shoots so many so quickly, and makes enough of them that he drags the defense all over the place as a result. Um and Ben's using him kind of sparingly. He's not he's not over relying on him as well with the way that they play because mm. Charles Wells playing so well. Um but yeah, I mean that's you know they gave up what 25 points to London in the mm. first six minutes and then gave what 20 points to Cheshire in the first four minutes. Yeah. You know that you know it's it, you know offensively I love the group I love the I love the group he has but Defensively, you know, they the, the, you know a little bit like Newcastle did in the certain default in the starting lineup. Mm. That you know something's going to have to be um, kind of tinkered with because you can't keep getting giving those starts out. And then of course what happened was actually Walker came in and Walker made a massive difference because he yeah. played with the presence. And then Mackenzie and Washington were around him and Lal, yeah. who has kind of gone to the radar because he's been hurt. But he's clearly a solid guy, and and and, and Rob clearly likes him because he, he plays him quite a lot. Um, you know, and the yeah. goal when they kind of drag step back in the game. Yeah, that 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 unit had a 13-0 run. Mackenzie, five of them, and Leicester were in the lead, 20, 29 to thirty. And then and then Leicester got a bit of momentum. Asbury and Idowu, uh with threes. Next, having made the first four, went four for twenty-one from behind the arc. After that, in the rest of the first half, and 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 and. And Leicester are up by five... no. 25 threes and a half. That, yeah, that means you're happy. Yeah. Also, Leicester went, um, Leicester probably, I can never remember. Um, and one, one way that's a, you know, a, a, a tactic because you're trying to mess with their spacing and mess with their rhythms. Um, but it's also, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have wanted to play that much soon. Mm. Um, you know, it, it's kind of saying we're really struggling to guard these guys um, one on one. Um, to play that much, it did look like a box on one, but I went back. It wasn't a box on one. It was okay. just Kimball Kinsey being smart because oh, basically okay. they were they're in a two three zone. Macy and Jack came up to the top, and Kimball McKenzie thought, "Well, no one else is going to get out to him. I better get out to him." So he kind of broke the zone a little bit. Um, but um, they, you know they did play a lot of zone, and um, that's difficult because you get into kind of a passivity defensively at times where you're watching and you're hoping that they miss, um, and the. Game from it and our right took over. Yeah, so so same in the second half. Uh, Cheshire starts getting them in front. Yes, Leicester bench unit comes in. It's sixty-five, seventy-two, and then as you say, right, uh, five in a row ties the game at seventy-two, seventy-two with a quarter to go. And then Leicester couldn't make a field goal start of the fourth quarter. Knicks continuing to score freely, and they they're out to double figures. Looks like it's going to be comfortable. Yeah, well, Leicester couldn't make a field goal for a while, as you say, and it was actually a unit. It was their, their kind of anti-starting unit with Jack Hudson and David Ulf. Uh, Jack Hudson rang the point really well, I thought, because he benefited from having Rye in the game because Rye becomes a de facto point guard. Uh, and, um, when Rye's in the game like that and, and, and he's in attack mode because he knows he's the guy who has to create, um, then they become very difficult now. I mean, what I'm watching Ryan, I'm looking at him thinking, he, he is, he, you nailed it again with him because it's his deceleration, which is his mm. skill, you know, and it's, and generally he has this crossover, every, his attack moves are always off his left hand. Now he might start right, but he's always going to cross over to his left to attack. And, and once he attacks on his left, he's got such body control with his he's stopping, starting or finishing. He's almost impossible to stop. Uh, and the only scout report for him, I think, oh, you've got to keep him going right. You got to send him right and not let him spin back. You got to not let him cross over. Keep him going right and make him meet, have him meet somebody at the rim and make make him shoot a floater over somebody. I think any time you let him get kind of a, a snake dribbling or a crossover dribble, and you let him get to his left, you're done. Um, I don't think anyone's going to stop him. And um, 
yeah, Leicester's when the mix and match they're off the mix and match their units a little bit, but this is a problem. If you give up a run in the beginning, if you have a drought at any point, um, the drought is gonna hurt you. And that's mm. what it did. And and it looked like the game was over, yeah, and a minute gone. and a half to go, they're twelve points up. There should be no way back in. But then one twenty three to go, Asbury hits a three. Looked like a foul as well to me. Uh, not cool, but the three goes in, 98-89. Rideau goes too quick, unnecessarily quick. He misses. Leicester run it back down the other end. Adowu steps into a transition three, and 109 to go is 98-92. Yeah, Rideau really kind of lost his head the last few minutes of this game. Not great at all. Um, he played really well the first part of it. I'm surprised he stayed in the game as long as he did. He went far too quick on that play to give up the three for a double. That was just not smart. Um, and then Campbell McKenzie did, did the opposite of that, demonstrated how smart he was by fouling a guy when you wouldn't you normally need the foul, but you know that he's shooting 34% from the foul line, so it's a smart play. And um, he proved it's a smart play by missing two. At this point, um, for some reason, uh, at this point for me, Ben has to take Riddle out. You can't have a guy who's, who's just there with a foul shot who's your point guard with a minute to go in the game. Mm. Got plenty of guys on the bench who can shoot foul shots. But he kept him in. And um, Leicester came down. I think McKenzie got a layup. Uh, no, um, th this was the play before. So uh, Holmes attack missed. Uh, Doe jammed it in, 98-94. Oh, yeah. So they've gone they've gone 8 nothing in under 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, and that's then... the best in Go on. Go on. Uh, then I was about to say, Rideau fouled again by McKenzie, uh, and he misses both again. Yeah, Leicester are just about the best in the league at getting a quick basket when they need one, because they run this little horn set whereby, basically, McKenzie knows he's going, <laughs> he's getting to the rim. You know, at home, they just they get to the rim really quickly. They're, they're quite smart with their decision-making. And uh, Rideau's fouled again, and as I say, they threw him the ball again, and, and um, another two missed foul shots. But Leicester with three players lined up and only Shargwa there for Cheshire. And I'm, I was a bit surprised they didn't have two players lined up, to be honest with you, but they only needed Shargwa. Shargwa bats the ball Sorry. out. Uh, Leicester play defence. They get a, yeah. a, a corner three for Kristen, which he misses. Shargwa again gets the offensive rebound, uh, but he misses the putback. Loose ball and Rido comes up with it. So Cheshire just killing them on the offensive glass. But he steps out of bounds, so it's a yeah. Leicester ball with 36, uh, 37 seconds to go. Yeah, he picked the ball. He didn't pick the ball. He went for some fancy dribbling because he, he didn't want to get fouled. Mm. He didn't want the basketball. He was trying to avoid being fouled because he knew if he picked the ball up, they were going to foul him. And um, that's why he shouldn't have been in the game because mm. that's why he turned the ball over. And you look at the, the shot to Ben Thomas saying to him, pick the ball up. But the reason he wasn't picking the ball up was because he didn't want any, he didn't want any part of the foul line, you know? And so the next one was um, was McKenzie, wasn't it? Was it McKenzie? Yeah, McKenzie to the rim, ninety eight, ninety six, and then you know, Le and Le Leicester play defense initially until Rideau gets yeah. the ball, and then they foul him. Yeah, um, and he made the first one eventually. Yeah, he made the first one, missed the second, but out of bounds off a Dowu, sixteen point yeah. eight seconds to go. It's a Cheshire ball, ninety eight, ninety six, and this time they. Managed to get it to Aaron Rye, who was fouled with 12 and a half seconds to go. He made no. both, and that was the game. That was the game. Yeah, I think it was the right call. I think it was off Ido. When you look at you looked, I watched it back, it was kind of got two hands, and he moves it from left hand to right hand and knocks it out of bounds. But you got a rebound. You don't really matter. Even if you don't, don't get that call, even if you get that, you're lucky. You know, mm. ultimately, you've got rebounding position. You've got to be able to rebound a foul shot to win a game, and we've seen that multiple times this season. Down the stretch, it's also I think when that we're still at only one loss for the ninety-five point rule this season. Oh, yeah, and that was indeed. an overtime game. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's one hundred and two more home points for um the team, and they win. You know, yeah. it's very tough to win on the road if you give up more. Give up more than ninety. That's the ninety-five point rule for everybody. Is if you give up ninety-five points on the road, you don't win many games. Mm. And I think mm -hmm. there's only one this year, and I think it might have been in Manchester. Um, who, who wouldn't play much defense anyway? Manchester beat Cheshire, which was that block game, 116 and 90 something. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's you know, Leicester basically taking the lumps at the moment with a kind of a new team. Um, and the team that's doing quite a lot right, but just has some fatal flaws. Cheshire are possibly at this point, that well, I think almost definitively at this point, the second best team in the league, given their body of work so far. 
um, um, I think they're going to have to be scouted a lot better to beat them regularly. I don't think teams are scouting in the way they need to. And I think they've benefited from the time without Rye because it's let the other guys get into a rhythm and let them step up, you know, Chris in particular. They're still playing without Holden today, but, you know, Hudson mm. Hudson came in, you know, played multiple minutes, uh, you know, at a high level, you know, and 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 they ran their offence well throughout that. And they just scored 102 points at home. Mm. You know, mm. they are scoring the ball. And they have we- they have players who are very, very comfortable scoring the ball in, mul- in, in a multiplicity of ways. Um, mm. So, you know, they are... I think I'm more comfortable saying they offer real than I am for anybody else at the moment mm. outside of London. I think Leicester offer real, but as I say, they're taking their lumps and they've got some. Ultimately, they've got to find some defensive consistency from somewhere. Um, Sheffield have to find some offensive consistency. Caledonia, we'll see. Um, they, I think they, they're a couple of games away from being where they need to be. I'm not utterly convinced, but I think I might be in the next couple of weeks. And then, um, and then Newcastle coming up beating a couple of teams that they should beat, and then that leaves us with um, Surrey and, and Plymouth and Manchester, you know, towards the tail end, and mm. Surrey got a bit of momentum. So yes, yeah, so I think Cheshire have a lot to be happy about, apart from the last minute and a half of that game, which was mm. a um, cluster schmuck. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he was yeah. yeah. rhyming sign. You know, it really was. It was one of those game. It was, yeah, it was a game we lost to, to Cheshire in the Cup quarter final in 2017 when we were up by yeah, 12 or two. Yeah, yeah. Literally yeah, everything that could, everything that it wasn't just that, it was a yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. And everything that could go wrong went wrong. Yeah. Every We watched it back. Um, and that was nearly the case with Cheshire. You know, it's mm. a situation when you get to that situation whereby all you got to do is make one play in a minute yeah. and a half and you win the game. And you literally made absolutely no plays at all, mm. and, um, and made some bad decisions and missed foul shots, and they got they got lucky in the end. I think. Mm. Um, so yeah, good week. Yeah, uh, Shagwa twenty three points, eight rebounds, six assists, two steals, one block, eight of twelve shooting. Not a bad Very day. Very good. You live with office. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aaron really? Rice six yeah, of well. nine shooting, nineteen points, five rebounds. Jack with eighteen points. Plus 23 on the old plus minus. Mm. Uh, 23 offensive rebounds, 19 second chance points, and 23 points off turnovers. Um, Asbury, 23 points, 8 of 12 shooting. Adowu, 18 and 7 rebounds. Mackenzie, 16 points. All the starters were in the negative figures in the plus minus. All the bench players in the plus. Asbury was the only one not 18 or more minus. He was only minus 2. Uh, 51 uh, bench points, although I think forty-one of those were in the were in the first yeah. half. Well, the bench are playing a lot of minutes because they're playing better. Yeah, you know that's the reality of it. Um, yeah, good, good, good weekend for Asbury. So that's a positive mm. thing for them. Um, but you know they, they've got a lot of guys, and you're not quite sure who the better players are. You mm. know, who are you going to play? Law? Are you going to play Holmes? You know, you're going to play Walker? You're going to play Bridges? You're going to play McKenzie? Or are you going to play Pinson? You know. You can have too many of those decisions, which mm. can make things a little bit tricky. Mm. Um, and at some point, it's going to have to be. I'm going to say that whichever of you guys plays defense, mm. and Asbury's probably the one who's playing a bit more than the rest, because whilst his defense is at times um, unattached gambly. or disattached, mm. sometimes his mind goes there's gambly, and his mind goes for one does he misses face cuts. He also does try. Mm. You know, he's trying to make plays, he's trying to block shots, he's trying to be athletic. So that's why I think he's getting a little bit more um a little bit more time than than, than some of the other guys. But yeah. that's a, you know, it's a, it's a battle, battle when you've got ten or eleven players, you know, and, and you don't have a definite and it's not like you've got six guys who've been with you last year who are your definitive starters and yeah, you just push yeah. putting them on the side, you know, and so that they're, they're taking lumps. It might help them in the long run, but they're gonna have to stay together. Yeah. So let's quickly run through the league table before we go. Um, London 13 and 1, Cheshire second, 8 and 4, Bristol 8 and 5, Caledonia with the second fewest losses at 7 and 3, uh, Sheffield 7 and 6, Leicester 6 and 6, Newcastle 5 and 7, Surrey now 3 and 9 and inside the playoff places. Uh, and Manchester, and there was some stat the other week I came up with where it's the first time in about four years they've been in the player places. Uh, two mm-hmm. and nine Manchester, and Plymouth two and eleven. So I think, given the technology challenges we've had, we should just say goodbye here and now, Dave. 
Yeah, I think so. Just on the note that, you know, people are really suggesting that London were trying to win last week after that game today at mm. Plymouth, mm. really. Mm. You know, to use a Geordie phrase, give your head a wobble. <laughs> give your head a wobble. Right. So we're going to call it a day and I'm going to have to splice some of that together to make it work, but we'll we'll find a way. We'll be back next week at some point somehow uh, to do this again. It might be Monday. I think I'm working Sunday again next week. But Dave, uh, have have a great birthday, mate. Enjoy your 50th. I'll do my best. I'm, I'm happy now. No, 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 no. The weight of the SMB is... <laughs> We'll never know what the weight of SMB was hanging over, Dave, because it cut out once again. But we'll leave it there. So we'll be back again next week. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Goodbye.